Hello everyone and welcome back to Mass Effect Andromeda. This is episode 5. Last time we explored more of Eos going deep down into the into the planet, into this vault uh, to cleanse the atmosphere. Uh, it was an incredible uh, incredible journey seeing like all of the inner workings of the the alien technology and interfacing it with uh, interfacing with it in a way that it wouldn't you know negatively affect us in the way that it did uh, with with Alec last time on uh, on Habitat 7. But this episode we're going to be establishing an outpost um, just over this way. This is going to be our first outpost that we put back because the remnant vault is now active. And then we'll see what else we can we can do. I believe that we've got the memory trigger on um, the surface here as well as some side missions. So we'll check that out, and then we'll be heading back to the to the Nexus. Um, we'll get back onto the Tempest because that will allow us to um, check out those those strike missions as well. Um, actually, I should be able to do the strike missions from. I can do strike missions from here, can't I? Um, is it the is it the terminal? I can do strike missions from here? Maybe not. Uh, we've got a live records coordination which we can read. Why do I feel like you could do strike missions from here? Maybe I'm misremembering. I swear that there was a... Hmm. Maybe... Maybe not. I swear I could do strike missions from somewhere. I think it's on the Tempest. Um, so we'll do some strike missions because it's uh, it's about that time that we check out our success rate of the ones that we, we sent off because we've been pretty busy. Uh, we've got, also got some codex entries. Uh, so we're going to get through codex at the beginning of this episode and I'm also going to level up my characters before we proceed. Um, so joining our crew here is PB Basale. PB mostly keeps out of the way. She's guarded about herself, and you're respecting her space. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll learn more about PB uh, as we go on. And then the ongoing psychological profile for Ryder, um, it does change the dot points over time, so it just kind of shows where we're at at the moment. So that almost makes me feel like, you know how uh, in the original Mass Effect games it had... Here's your Paragon and your Renegade bar, it just shows where you're at, but this game has the really interesting approach in its dialogue wheel to, you know, have those different types of, of responses, which I think is really good. I think that's a really good way to do it. Instead of it just being black and white, they're like, here's a thoughtful response, here's an empathetic response, here's a uh, professional response, a casual, casual response, an intelligent response, like, all of that kind of stuff is really, really cool. And so I think that's what this ongoing psychological profile is, um, is it's mostly kind of keeping a record of how our character communicates outside of a Paragon and Renegade sort of situation. So showing that we still show high levels of empathy and express passionate opinions, we maintain our poise and discipline under intense pressure, and impulsive actions often speak louder than words. But it's cool that that does get an update over time. I quite like that. We do have an overview of Andromeda Wildlife. Uh, an overview seems like a broad title, considering we've only been on two planets so far. <laughs> but we'll do it. The nature of life in the Andromeda Galaxy was debated at length by Milky Way scholars. Many Milky Way species show convergent evolution, upright bipeds of certain height and atmospheric tolerances, leading some to theorize this pattern might give some evolutionary advantage, despite counter-arguments by Hanar scientists. Interestingly, the Ket and Angara continue to fit this pattern. Angara. The Ket and Angara? Have I met Angara yet? Or is the Codex entry just... What is, what's the Angara? I don't know what the Angara are yet. Uh, I don't know if that's another species like the Ket that we'll encounter, or whether it's like some of the wildlife we've seen. I don't know. We'll find out. The wildlife and flora encountered in the Helios Cluster have adapted to the presence of the Scourge, evolving epidermal layers or carapaces that can cope with ambient radiation, or in the case of some plants, successfully feeding off it. Many use bioluminescence to attract prey or as a threat or mating display. Concerns were raised around the ability of Milky Way species to consume proteins from Andromeda, so seed banks formed a significant part of the Ark's cargo. We now know it's safe to consume food grown or hunted here, though enzyme supplements are recommended and have become a social norm at mealtimes. 
That's cool. Um, yeah, there's so many new words um, to remember that I might have a few slip here and there. Like, for example, I, when they mentioned wraiths, and I was like, I've totally forgotten about wraiths. And then I saw them again to actually put them into my um, <laughs> codex, and then I remember that they're the, they're the invisible dogs. All right, we've got the remnant, the creators, right? So let's have a look at this. An artificial creation must have a creator, but there is scant evidence of whomever created this remnant. This cave is not a natural formation. I have consulted the Nexus scientists' scans obtained by PB on the condition that I not rearrange her data and records of your own investigation, but my conclusions remain speculation. We can be certain that the remnant builders are several orders of sophistication above the initiative's technology, Interlinked cluster-wide planetary engineering is beyond the logistics or budget of any known species. The energy requirements alone suggest a Type 1 civilization on the Kardashev scale. On a cultural level, the builders must have been intelligent and capable of large-scale cooperation. The proportions of the vaults and devices found suggest a species with similar physical traits to humans, but with no genetic evidence left behind, their appearance, along with their motivations, remain a mystery. And I really... I'm a fan of this because it's a classic way to have mystery in space is mis ancient unknown civilization. Who were they? Who were they? Where are they from? What were they about? You know, do they know things? Let's find out. And I think it's really amazing um, to, to start with that because we have seemingly a star map, a star map that popped up in the vault showing all these connected planets with inactive vaults, seemingly communicating to us that these remnants, these creators, um, would have had some sort of dominant power in the galaxy. Maybe not even a dominant power, but maybe just the top of the food chain almost, like they are responsible for a lot of what took place or takes place in Andromeda, whether they're still around or not. So it's kind of similar to how we have a lot of Prothean stuff in the in the Milky Way, a lot of that um, sort of history between Protheans and the, and the Reapers. They could have been something that took place to wipe these guys out as well. Or maybe they were the, you know, maybe they were their, the source of their own destruction and something bad happened and that's why all the vaults are actually inactive and we're about to inadvertently unleash chaos. I mean, when we turned that vault on at the end of last episode... We were met with a fucking cloud of darkness that was going to eviscerate us if we didn't escape uh, as maybe some sort of defense or a warning or something. Because, um, you know, a vault is usually to keep something in. <laughs> That's kind of usually what the term of a vault is for. You you have you keep something in there. So if, if we released that cloud of energy um, before we, you know, did some stuff with the beep boop and then we reversed it all who knows who knows um so we're in this this point where like i said it's it's really cool because us as the player are in the same shoes as the as the characters for a change which wasn't the case um for the most part in in the original trilogy because the original trilogy has a lot of things that are just already established for a lot of people like uh the citadel and the the council and all of the different alien species and the, the Prothean stuff and discovering that mystery and the Reapers was new to the characters, but for the most part, everything else was uh, established. But being in a new galaxy, we get to explore it and experience it at the same time as the characters themselves, and I think that's really good because it's very immersive because you feel that you are a part of the crew all discovering things together, and it's, and it's really, really cool. Uh, so we've got Settling Helios, which is terraforming, uh, which is the science of making planets more viable for life. So we've got soft terraforming, which involves the introduction of bacteria or ocean algae to bind toxic gases or adjust a hostile ecology. Hard terraforming is often conducted on arid planets with a thin atmosphere, using the impact of a comet or asteroid to warm the planet before introducing microbial life. This process can take centuries. Terraforming even a barren planet often involves significant financial and ethical hurdles. The Andromeda Initiative has the capability for terraforming if necessary, but is limited by the timeframes involved. 
The Golden Worlds surveyed from the Milky Way were intended su- to support quick colonist deployment, with second-tier second tier candidates identified for potential terraforming later. If the Remnant Vault on Eos is intended for terraforming, as evidence shows, its function is unprecedented. The ability to affect change on a global scale uh, in such a short time defies our understanding of planetary science. Yeah, you have such a powerful control over, over the atmosphere. So I guess we could probably come to the safe assumption that um, these vaults would have been active on these golden worlds when they were observing them uh, from the Milky Way galaxy. And then these vaults being inactive has caused these planets to kind of, you know, become very barren and, and chaotic. Um, but let's have a look at our skills because we'll level up, our, level up our character. I've got five points. Five points for Chad here. We're going to level up pull, so we're going to have more duration. Um, and then I think I'm going to give myself the ability to. Might go for assault rifle accuracy, to be honest. I gave myself a shotgun upgrade, but we're currently running an assault rifle and a, um, and a pistol, so I can have better power recharge. Because it was minus 4%, now it's 100%. Okay, we'll upgrade Cora's charge. And then we'll upgrade Vetra's uh, concussive shot, I think. We'll do concussive shot. Wonderful. Okay, so that's the codex and skills done. Let's go set up this outpost nearby. Ah! Uh, Let's not go for a swim. <laughs> let's not go for a let's not go for a swim. Uh, let's go over the the interesting bridge that forms itself. There you go. That's so satisfying to look at. Um, all right, now I need to get back over here. So we'll go set up this outpost. We've still got like more to do on this planet. I'm not sure how extensively I will search every single planet, but I'll try and you know get through tasks as they as they come because it's easier to go through it, um, you know, sensibly over time instead of just trying to save it all for later and then you'll have an immense amount of grinding to do uh, much much later. So let me just see where we're at. All right, I can drive around here. So, like, while we're on this planet, I'll scan those minerals. When there's, like, stuff where it's, like, go to these spots and scan these minerals or pick up these things, I might just, you know, for the sake of, um, for editing and time, I'll probably cut out a lot of the point A to point B driving stuff, and we'll just sort of cut to the, you know, actual pickups or conclusions of things. Cat are fighting a Krogan! Oh, dude. We gotta help Drac. Get him. All right, but stuff like this, obviously, you wanna you wanna fucking sh include. What's up, my boy, Drac? Okay, I made a mistake. There's a few more here than I thought. I thought it was just that one. That comment was a bit late. Think I made them angry. Good. Hello. Is there still more? Oh. <laughs> yep. Focus up. That's it, kid. Keep it up. Good one. But the melee doesn't work super well sometimes. Oh, that's Cora. Yep, good, good job shooting a teammate. Nice. <laughs> 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 
That fight was fun. Fighting with a Krogan. You're telling me. <laughs> you could really handle yourself, kid. And I hear you're the one to thank for clearing up the sky. That's right. Had your number all wrong. We work well together. You're not so bad yourself, old man. Maybe we should work together after all. This fight was pretty good, but you're still Nexus and green as a drill. <laughs> still, something tells me you've got potential. Be ashamed to waste that. I'm in. <laughs> Just point me to your ship and try to keep up. You got a problem with my drill boys, hey? Eh? Fuck yeah. Alright, Cora, you're out. <laughs> How do I change my, my party immediately? <laughs> Cora, get out of my party. We've, we've, we've heard enough about your Asari Huntress days. I'm gonna establish this outpost and I'm gonna get Drac in my team immediately. If there isn't a scene where me and Drac have a headbutt, I'm a complain. This is where we'll build our new outpost. A real beginning. Prepping deployment order. You must choose what purpose this new outpost will serve. Oh. The Nexus okay. doesn't get a say? Resources are at a crisis point. Protocol states this judgment call falls to the Pathfinder. Addison's With gonna be pissed. Supplies, you could build a military outpost, focusing on defense and militia training. Alternatively, a scientific outpost could advance the initiative's research and discoveries. Cool. We're gonna make the decision, and Addison's gonna be like, What the fuck? <laughs> How dare you make an outpost without my permission? Yeah, if I do not get a scene where Ryder and Drac headbutt each other out of a sign of respect, I'm gonna be upset. This is a big decision. Opinions team? What do you think? Military outpost or scientific? I say scientific. Aren't we here to explore? I say military. There's too many threats out here. Be advised that the first outpost placed by a Pathfinder will be a statement in itself. I knew it. Fair yeah. or not, <laughs> your choice will represent the initiative and its intentions in Andromeda. Consider carefully. I want scientific, and I knew that Cora would want military. Prioritize research and discovery. That's our foundation. And our future. Orders prepped. Ready on your signal. But, but where are the guns, man? Where are the guns? I'm, I'm all for science, baby. Let's establish this outpost. Andromeda Initiative, this is Ryder. Pathfinder. EOS is ready for deployment. Copy that. Outpost blocked inbound. And ready as hell. Okay, that's Addison, right? Hell yeah, dude. August Bradley, operational head for this block. Mayor now, I suppose. We're ready to make the most of what you delivered. Okay. Fuck yeah. Take good care of it. Uh yeah. It took a lot of people to get us this far. That's the work you'll continue. I hear that. Brodromos. That's what we're calling her. They're eager. I haven't seen eager for months. Oh, uh, you know what? She's actually fucking Eos not angry. Far from golden. But now it's a producer. A real and reasonable first step. They think you did the impossible. The Nexus. I warned them, hoping was irresponsible. You proved me wrong, Pathfinder. Okay. She calling me Pathfinder too. She's calling me Pathfinder. No shit. What's your game, Addison? What are you playing at? Seems like being my friend is suddenly valuable. Fair assumption. Interesting. I mean, I got the respect. The reality, Ryder, you brought us time. But one outpost on a long-shot planet won't stop us from starving. You already have a lead on something else? The nav point from the vault. Now it gets complicated. The others are ready to officially sanction your efforts.
to be a part of your success. We all want the initiative to succeed, but after failing for so long, no one agrees on how to do it. Be aware, that's all. Just doesn't, didn't feel like an argument to me, but that's okay. Whatever helps the initiative. I don't care why anyone helps, so long as they do. I've heard that before. Talk to Bradley. Later, we'll go over the extended job of Pathfinder. Until then. Tan's waiting on the Nexus. Okay. Nice. Now, talk, that scene that seems quite interesting. Um, it's cool that... Um, I think it's cool that we got that character development from from Addison because it go you know it establishes that she's just like I do not recognize your authority I do not recognize you as Pathfinder I'll call your father Alec and I'll call you Ryder and uh, it was it was cool to is is subtle because it wasn't it, was, it wasn't very on the nose which is like it was it was cool to just have her call as Pathfinder um, something that's something that I am noticing quite a lot and I think it's more so the game engine. Uh, than anything um, is I believe so the original Mass Effect trilogy was constructed on Unreal Engine and this is on Frostbite and I remember uh, when Anthem came out and I played some Anthem when it first came out with a couple of friends we bought it together because we we're going to play it because it looked awesome uh, we bought Anthem on release where's my clown makeup we bought Anthem on release uh, so that was technically my first Bioware game, <laughs> was me playing Anthem, um, and it didn't last very long, the game looks gorgeous, it looks pretty, and the concept of it was amazing, uh, and it was also made on Frostbite, and I remember reading the whole article that came out, um, from the, the, ma the mismanagement, the upper management nightmares, all of that kind of stuff, um, from, like, the the terrible development to how they couldn't even decide what the game wanted to be uh, right until they had to show something like it i've read the whole history of anthem and a lot of the thing like the thing to highlight uh, there is some like one of the major points is the frostbite engine is uh, a dice's engine for battlefield like it's their shooter engine and it looks gorgeous in a shooter like it looks fantastic like frostbite in battlefield and battlefront look really really cool but then ea is like now use frostbite for everything even though it's it's not an engine that is built for rpgs so it just makes it incredibly difficult and mass effect andromeda and anthem are both on the frostbite engine and i think it shows and it's a bit unfortunate because there's some things that you i think if, if mass effect andromeda for example was you know unreal engine 4 at the time because i think the original trilogy was unreal engine 3 if if it was just translated over to the same engine i think a lot of the probably like visual issues that we're having that we would see or a lot of the the weird sort of like jank might not be there um and that's just kind of like an unfortunate engine um issue because you look at this and you go man the the original trilogy the older games kind of looked a little better in this way or they had a little bit better animations in this way um but it's it's very interesting to to know that like uh or be aware that the, the frostbite engine is not built for rpgs and yet they were like made to <laughs> they were made to do it anyway you know that kind of and that kind of sucks um but like Outside of that, it's not awful. It's not terrible. Um, there are certainly parts about this that look very nice. And then there are other parts that don't look as nice. Um, but it's not it's not ruining anything. It could it could be a little a little better in, in some areas, but um, I'm also uh, feel for the people that probably put a, a lot of effort into this game or worked with what they could at the time and I think it's it's a bit silly to say that there's not effort in this game at all because there most certainly is the the lore is there the character interactions are there the the premise is there the um I I think there's a lot of that 
Um, and maybe this is because I don't have rose tinted glasses for Mass Effect. I only played it within the last year, so I don't have like a nostalgia bias. Is like this feels like a really nice continuation of Mass Effect for me, and I really like the idea and concept of them taking Mass Effect to another galaxy because it's far removed enough from the original story that they can have a bit more freedom to explore. And I have I have heard people have, have spoken about. The fact that, un the, unfortunately, due to the reception of this game, I think that the DLCs and any future plans for Andromeda uh, were cancelled. And that is unfortunate because, like, and that's the thing, I feel like what's been happening uh, more and more lately is instead of trying to do better next time, uh, which keeps happening with Battlefield... Don't worry, guys, we'll get it better next time. Um, they just scrap it and cancel it all together because I, I, I could imagine that they could take the lessons learned and make something better. But I think that's a that's a whole complex and deep topic to get into in itself because how many we start getting into the recent releases with Bioware of like everyone's worried about their next Dragon Age. Uh, everyone's worried about what they're going to do because Anthem was bad and Andromeda was bad and all this kind of stuff and uh, the magic is gone and you know Battlefield after Battlefield comes out and it's like a mess and then they go don't worry guys we've learned our lesson and it's like I thought you learned your lesson three games ago and I, th I'm, that's all I'm going to say I just wanted to take a bit of a moment just to like address that because I feel like you need to at some point so I'm going to address that just this one time that um, it's just an, an unfortunate circumstance because I would have loved to have seen this story continue with more. Um, but I'm grateful for the fact that I do have more Mass Effect to play right now. And I'm very excited for the next Mass Effect game that comes out as well. Um, as well as eventually working my way through Dragon Age so I could hopefully also be kind of excited for the next Dragon Age game that comes out as well. We'll see. But yeah, it's stuff like how Andromeda stuff got cancelled. Um, the Anthem, like, re revival, they were going to, you know, revive Anthem. That got cancelled. <laughs> so that's dead. And it's, it's just kind of a, a shame because the potential of Anthem was really cool. The potential of Anthem was, was really cool. And that's why I got it because it, it looked pretty. It was just an unfortunate disaster. And I think that's, like, the, a thing is a lot of this negative sort of uh, opinions come from a place of, you know, people that were really excited because they saw the potential of it and the potential just wasn't realized and that kind of sucks. But um, at the same time, I always like to go into things with, with an open mind instead of going in ready to hate something, you know what I mean? And um, with the fact that I don't have rose tinted glasses on Mass Effect, I am, I'm loving Andromeda still. I'm loving Andromeda so far and I... Uh, I quite enjoy it, so it's it's a nice journey. But that's my little that's my little rant on Bioware slash EA slash Frostbite, um, and then we'll let's let's continue let's continue reading. So, activating the vault discovered below Eos's surface has a dramatic and immediate effect. Radioactive particles are being stripped from the atmosphere by unknown means, and the resulting temperature changes are calming Eos's high winds. Um, Prodromos, the first Pathfinder established outpost, has been founded in Fairwind's Basin with Mayor August Bradley in charge. The Nexus is broadcasting footage of departing colonists and the new conditions on EOS across all communications channels. Cool. Finding a home. So, EOS, the first outpost. You explored and reactivated a mysterious alien vault, apparently designed for terraforming, bringing the hope of new life back to EOS, despite the potential cat threat. Ket Threat, you guided the outpost on Eos on a mission of peaceful scientific exploration of the Helios Cluster. Here's Nakmore Drax, so Clan Nakmore, which is a familiar... It's a, it's a familiar uh, clan from the original trilogy, I think. I've heard it before. After earning Nakmore Drax respect on Eos, he agreed to join your squad. The Tempest is a little cozy for a Krogan, but the old timers made himself comfortable. When not regaling the crew with stories, he hangs out in the galley, tinkering with his guns. So essentially, this is Zaid as a Krogan. <laughs> Perfect. Good old Zaid. Alright, so we've got to speak with Addison on the Nexus for some AVP cryo deployment perks. Uh, we've got better beginning, which is to go back to, to Nexus. 
give EOS radiation time to clear. Cool. So we've got to go back to EOS, which is good because we've got to do the memory thing as well. Uh, so those are our priority ops. Remnant data cores. Okay, so those are random things to find as well. Good to know. We've got to do the murder, which is back on the Nexus. All right, let's go get this memory and then go back to Nexus, because I think that's going to be the best way to progress shit for now. Um, so that memory slot is over here. Okay, 1,500 meters away. Cool outpost. and out Oh, actually, our Tempest. Oh, nice. I didn't realize that. When we establish an outpost, our Tempest lands here as well, automatically. Okay. Hmm. Let's, let's go to the Tempest. Let's go to the Tempest real quick. Oh, is there, there is full damage? Okay. I was hoping there... Hang on. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so there's full, there's full damage. Um... So you can't just jump off a huge height. You had to test it. But as long as I do a little bit of a jump beforehand, I think it's I think it's fine. So Prodromos. We're gonna go on to the Tempest because we've done a significant amount of um, main story stuff to have PB on board and Drac on board. Uh, so we'll talk to everybody. There's my there's my nomad. We'll talk to everybody. We'll do our missions. Uh, we'll do our little assignments for our teams. And then we'll go get this memory when I drive out on the on the Nomad. Oh, it departs the planet. Never mind. Okay. I don't want to depart the planet immediately because it might it might automatically take me to the Nexus. So I'll go and do this memory first. And then we'll do it. Looks like they found it drifting and brought it here. I'm not able to extrapolate point of origin, Pathfinder. But the Ark could be intact, like the Hyperion. Let's hope so. Okay, so we found a cave on the way to the memory block. And there's a SOS escape pod from an Ark, interestingly nice enough. Nice systems are in peril. And I'm going to die in a second. Look at this, look at this cat truck. Can't even scan it. Look at that cat vehicle. Very interesting. Um, and there's also... Um, let's see if I can make it over here. <laughs> without dying. There's an audio log here as well. Which is quite interesting. Welcome back, Tyranny. So Tyranny are a living holor. In need of... of assistance. The more we learn. The worse he is. I think that's the... If they're saying the worse he is... Um, I wonder if they're talking about the... Um, the main... I guess the, the main one? The big big boy with the crown? With the halo? With the bone crown on his head? So I guess we're, we're learning about him through random audio logs. Oh god, hang on. This is radiation level 3. Jesus. Above normal radiation levels. Hang on a minute. Before I ride out here to get this memory, I might... I might need to, um... Can you upgrade your radiation resistance, or do I just need to fucking go for it? Uh, are we gonna die? Is it just this place is a strain on our gear, but so is everywhere else. Yeah, we're just gonna we're die. We're best we okay. can be. Gil has tuned the Nomad perfectly for EOS. That's funny you say that, because I'm dead. <laughs> My support is failing. <sighs> Arr, I can't even get up here, what the fuck? Come on. So, um, we're kind of dead. Okay, life support is depleted. Are we, are we still alive? I think that's my health going down on the bottom right. Okay, we're still we're still on a timer. We, we can do this. And then I just need to quickly fast travel. <laughs> quickly fast travel out of here. Whoa! I'm seeing shit. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be seeing yet. 
Let's get this memory real quick. Whoa. The cat built Oh shit, this? where am I? They don't just have a base here. Fuck! This is a stronghold. Fuck! I don't damn it! <laughs> Dude! Okay. Look at those things. Oh fuck, man. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Holy shit! I did not even see that. Um crap. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get up there in time. Yo, look at that. That's fucked. And it's shielded. Bane, we're coming up on the barracks. Stay sharp. Shouldn't be as many here as the base. No reason to get cocky though. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> uh, nothing ventured. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> Okay. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I don't know if we can actually get to that memory point. Um, the, God, that's funny. Alright, hang on. Um, there must be a way from this side to get on there. Um, so I need to get... Uh, let's see, let's go here. Let's do this. Look at this shit! Alright, is there a way that I can drive... Uh, Okay, we might be okay. We can go this way. We're gonna ignore this mass shielded structure for a sec. I think I have to get out of the car as well, so I might just die immediately. Alright, uh, quick scan it. Scan it. Scan it. Scan it! Oh no, hang on, I have to do this! One of your father's memories is now accessible. Return to Samnode on the Hyperion to investigate further. I did it. Except I have to resume a previous save, so I don't think I did it. I have to be in and out. For some reason I thought I had to scan it. Did I get it or not? No. I think I can do it. I believe in myself. All I have to do... This would be much better if my life support was not already drained. Um, so that's kind of a problem. Um, we can do this. So, actually, ah, oh, yep, that's a that's a not a nice shield. I was like, maybe if I go through there, it'll restore my life support. Yeah, no, it doesn't. That is a physical shield. Oh shh. I didn't look where I was driving. Alright. <laughs> I can do this. In and out. Okay, so I just park right next to it. Scan it. Pick it up. Sam, another memory prompt. Get back in! One of your father's memories is now accessible. Return to Samnode on the Hyperion to investigate further. Fuck yeah. Flawless. Okay. There's a thing there. I'm, we're not going to be able to... <laughs> We're not gonna be able to. We're not gonna be able to explore that area for a while. We need better radiation resistance. I got the memory though. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay. So I got another memory. Um, now this says, "Oh, it only shows up on the map while you're around there." So there's no question mark there anymore. So it's good to explore, I guess, while you're around there, I suppose. I don't know what that exclamation mark is for, but let's go check that out, because apparently that's a thing. Okay, there's an exclamation mark here, I don't know what it's for. Let's go check it out. I guess it's fair to check out our outpost, I mean, we made this place. Can't believe we made it. This. This computer? Uh, maybe it's inside. It might be inside. Alright, let's head inside. Already getting requests from the Fedromos labs. We came to explore and learn. That's who we are. Really hope all the scientists will be safe out here. Okay, it's this. Formal request for Darket 
to uh, Tevian, number 28. Making the request again, Bradley, I know it's not your fault. I know she's supposed to be the second wave, but I want to trail so that when all this calms down in a few years, we can get proper outrage around how long it took to reunite families, especially ones hurt during the Site-1-2 mess. You know, broken promise is a thing, right? Requesting the deployment of Darkett, Tevian, W84, Crispin, Exo Study Specialist. Okay. So I uploaded something. Speak with Addison's assistant, waking up the future. Okay. We got a merchant. Rare consumable, an explosive projectile launched from the Omni tool that deals massive damage. A Cobra RPG, Pathfinder helmet. What are you doing selling Pathfinder gear? So you can buy this. How much do I have? I got 1500 credits. Oh, boost, boost life support capacity. I needed that just then. <laughs> I just needed that. Let's sell all my salvage. Ooh, I gained some. I gained the big bucks. Cool. Um, I don't know how much I have of certain things. Um, let me have a look. Consumables. Do I only have one of each of everything here? Looks like it. Um, let's buy some stuff. I can't buy incendiary ammo. Can I buy multiple, or are you just... Oh, they only have one. They... Okay, so they, they have limited gear. Interesting. That's good to know, I suppose. And then, I guess I could... We can sell shit, right? So I got a Remnant Cryo Gauntlet. I'm keen to try that out. So I can sell my old... Omniblade... Okay. Okay, so if I've got multiple of shit, I can get rid of it. So I can get rid of my Pathfinder Pioneer, because I already crafted one. <laughs> anyway. Get rid of one of my Avengers. Gain some cash. Alright, that's good to know. I'll play around with merchants a bit more later. So I've... So the map will have some exclamation mark things, which I guess might be just, like, data points to check out. I suppose. So they may as well just be worth um, taking a look at. We got that memory. The risk of our own lives. Um, so we can now, after we check this out, we'll head back to the Tempest. There's a bunch, man. So, Team Sigma. Today's flight schedule. Sign up or you'll lose your equipment slots. The vault doohickey might be clearing up the atmosphere, but we've still got pockets of high radiation and bad weather across the continent. Okay, Pilot McCready. Best practices. Everything is shipped to the landing pad, especially from off-world, rather than sealed next supplies. Must go through quarantine. Okay. Cool. Cool. Where are we headed? Who's talking? Can I hear voices? Alright, we're going in. Another terminal. Please help. This is the only way I can get the word out before someone gets killed. My work crew, they keep talking about that remnant tech. They think the initiative's lying about how dangerous it is that a couple of electrodes in the right place could get the remnant to work for them instead. They've tried before, but I helped out in Medbay when those remnant observers carved up Barty. But Jennings says we could live like kings if we had an army of remnant bots working and fighting for us. He's taking the whole work crew to help him this time. I have to go with them. Maybe I can talk Jennings out of it, but if I can't, someone should know why we didn't come back. Someone left a warning. Looks like a work crew thinks they can take control of the remnant. That's an incredibly bad idea. Work crew rosters are posted publicly. The data pad mentioned Med Bay. A little work, we could find where to catch up with them. Okay. So I think that was, um, let's have a look. Investigate Med Bay, find the work rosters. Okay. I'm getting sidetracked with a side quest. That is the that is the open world <laughs> experience. 
<laughs> it's just like, all right, guys, I'm going to do this stuff. And then it's like, but what if I did some other things instead? What if I investigated a med bay to find some poor souls that think that they can convert the remnant to their side? Why do you look so antsy? What are you doing? Oh, is that a memory? What the hell? Hang on a minute. What's going on here? I got a sand memory here. It's not even marked on my map. What's going on? What the hell? I got a memory trigger right here. Another memory trigger? One of your father's memories is now accessible. Oh. Return to Samnode on the Hyperion to investigate further. So there's just memory triggers on the map that you have to just see. That wasn't marked at all. Interesting. Mayor Bradley. Pathfinder. Good to see you. We're busy as anything, thanks to you. Bit dusty, but we can adapt. It's worth it when it's your own. Don't overwork yourselves. Let's not drive people too hard. Rough enough getting this far. Nothing you see here came from cracking a whip. Everyone is just ready. You go do what you need to on the Nexus. Follow that dot. There will be more to do on EOS later. Some key positions? Connor Supply, Ramirez Medical, Abram Science, Fox Engineering. With them and my major domo, we won't end up like Site 1 and 2. They never knew what hit them. The first two outposts didn't have a chance. It was clear to everyone on the ground. I saw the brief. I'm making sure every one of our people is eyes wide. You changed this planet, but that doesn't make it easy. We'll use the efforts of those who went before. Good people, every last one. I'd have been honored to fail with any of them. I haven't reached the end of that trail, but not everyone died outright. Right. They tell me there were staggered evacs. If any want to try again, they're welcome. Oh, and Pathfinder, this is for you. It's our flag. Hang it where the Nexus can see. It's touched the soil of our first outpost in Andromeda. Make it real. Head for the Nexus, Pathfinder. Okay. Bradley. Right. Something for me to scan in here? Yeah. So it's green for like a there we go. This definitely treated wounds caused by a remnant. That data pad said the work crew tried to control them. Sand particles were removed from the wound. Analyzing. The sand may be from several locations. I need more data to form a conclusion. Okay. Case notes. We're gonna get we're gonna get a lot of um Seems that we're going to get a lot of uh, seemingly inconsequential notes to read. I'm not going to read. I can't read every every single one. Right. Okay. Hi. We want a data pad. Scratch pad. Okay. Cool. Water course repair team. Kane Fox, Lorelei Smith, Matthew Kinnison, Attachment Course, Axel Jennings, Sale Varax, and Jamie Kasparek. Okay. Work rosters. That data pad mentioned the name Jennings. Here, Axel Jennings. Assigned to set up weather monitoring devices all over the desert. Only one location matches the sound from the medical equipment. A monolith. Let's go. Okay. No sign of that work crew. But someone left their gear behind. Yeah. Okay. Wait. I've got an open comm channel. Easy money. Once the electrical charge builds up, 
Lexi, found another colonist. Uh, fucking dialogue? What the fuck? <laughs> Urgh, this game, like, keeps interrupting dialogue. I, I get something and I take two steps forward and it goes, Oh, there's a colonist. I've already scanned all of my colonists uh, for that quest as well. So that's just fucking... That's great. <laughs> So now I've got to save the crew in uh, in two minutes, uh, which I probably would have known. Um, hang on, where the fuck are they? I got two minutes to get all the way over there. Fuck. All right, we'll fast travel. Do we still have the timer? <laughs> um, I probably would have known that there would have been a bit more of a fucking time pressure instead of save the crew in the top right of the screen if that dialogue didn't get interrupted. So weird, man. In all your time with the Asari, did you ever meet an Ardat Yakshi? Not that I know of. Always wondered about our sniper, Tethys, though. I'm not real romantic about road hazards. Interesting rocks are just as bad for the Nomad. Let's save this crew. What's happening? Uh, hello? What the fuck? Um... What? The game just froze, but I can still move the camera. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> what the fuck? That was so weird. Yeah, I'm coming in on a vehicle! Let's go! Oh shit, nullifiers. Hang on, we got armor. Hang on, hang on a minute. Um, incendiary ammo. Oh shit! Hang on, now I'm shooting the wrong thing. Um, where's that? Look at that fucking thing, nullifier. Oh yeah, that's cool. Get that shit out of here. Oh, I should have scanned it, but I think I just got the codex entry anyway. I think we're good. Good when there's multiple targets, I'm not getting annihilated. Squad, what's going on? Am I speaking to you? Okay, just let me just hold Y to, to talk to you. Okay. Great timing. Thanks for the assist. Hello over there. Your experiment with the remnant didn't work out. Huh. Okay, who squealed? Gasperick? Yeah, I bet. These remnant could plow our fields, protect us from the cat. You control them, why shouldn't we? Um, do I control them? I don't know what you're talking about. Do I know what I'm doing? Since when are we controlling remnants? You're risking lives. How many people need to get hurt before you stop this? Pathfinder's got a point, Jennings. <sighs> Fine. But you can't protect us all the time, Pathfinder. Out here, we need every edge we can get. Okay. Well done, team. So, this is a... Let's see if there's anything I can scan here, actually. Give me some of those research points. Adaptive Initiative Core Tech. I think that's probably it. Right, now I'm gonna go back to the Tempest. I got sidetracked with a with a side mission. Uh, that the sky is beautiful in its own way. Felt weirdly janky. Nothing here will stop them. Not where I'd want to stake a claim, but some will be all too eager. I need to try and remember whenever it pops up with the mining thing to to actually do it. Get some stuff. Alright, I'm going back to the Tempest finally. <laughs> and we'll go back to the we'll go back to the Nexus. Okay. Let us depart the planet. Ascent is go. Leaving Atmo. All clear. What was that? It was like some weird distortion in the distance. 
That was strange. Before the meeting gets started, I have bunk assignments for PB and Drac. Already put my rucksack in the kitchen. I'll hang out there if that's okay. And I'm in one of the escape pods. More my speed. That's fantastic. Welcome aboard. Any thoughts, Ryder? Eh, he's cool. We're adventurers. Whatever makes the squad comfortable is okay with me. Let's talk about our success on EOS. Besides establishing our first viable outpost, we did some amazing things. We discovered the Remnant and breached their vault. And didn't get killed. Overcame radiation poisoning a number of times. And didn't die. Confronted by Ket at every turn. Once again, did not get killed. You guys really need to raise the bar on what you call success. <laughs> yeah, should we use the Krogan definition of success that got your homeworld nuked by your own people? <laughs> Fair enough. Let's focus. Back to the task at hand. Looking forward. Exactly. Here's my only question. When do we hit that next vault? It looked active. We have to get on that. Hang on, hang on. We need to not go off half-cocked. There are initiative priorities. The team calls the shots. Actually, the Pathfinder calls the shots, just to be clear. So what do you need from us, Ryder? All right, Cora. <laughs> what an interesting squad so far. Liam and Cora are going to instantly get the backseat. Because it's just like, this is the Mass Effect problem, right? <clears throat> There's always going to be human companions, and they are always the least interesting in comparison to having alien squad mates. And I just find that hilarious, you know? Just do a Mass Effect game where you can be an alien, you can have alien squad mates. <laughs> we only want the aliens. <laughs> It's always got to be the humans. Just get along, please, team. Let's be kind and give each other the benefit of the doubt. Finding a home for tens of thousands in this hellscape is stressful enough without adding dysfunction. You got it, boss. Cora giving me the eye. What's that about? If Krogan are known for one thing, it's getting along. <laughs> but not humility or self-awareness. Okay, let's head back to the Nexus. PB, Drax, see Lexi for a physical. Good meeting, everyone. <laughs> I love the realistic awkwardness of that encounter of having them all together for the first time and kind of being like, we're a team. And it's just like, uh, okay. It's, it's like realistically awkward. I kind of like that. Um, that's funny. Okay. Let's check out, because we can see that... So PB will be in an escape pod, and Drac will be hanging out in the kitchen. <laughs> this is the Remnant Nullifier, which this Remnant model appears to have been designed for excavation. If provoked, it enters a siege mode, where it anchors itself into the ground and launches explosive projectiles at a target. In this mode, this remnant constantly runs a self-repair cycle, reducing damage from incoming fire. PB claims that this characteristic is what earned it the name Nullifier. Recovery of Nullifier parts has been illuminating. They use both balancing pythons and dense ferrofluid reservoirs in their lower extremities to remain stable while firing, design characteristics that could be useful for initiative mining operations. Their blast shielding is also surprisingly light for its thickness and density. The plates are cushioned by a honeycomb of shock-absorbing polymer to distribute any ballistic force. However, these characteristics are also what allows them to absorb heavy fire and act as formidable opponents. Cool. Okay. Ooh, if we're on the ship, can I level up everyone? I can. Okay. So when we're on the ship, I can level up everyone all at once. So Cora and Vetra already leveled up, but... So he's a warrior... An academic crisis specialist, mercenary, and biotic commando. Cool. 
Now, let's see what our teams are capable of. So, Drac, Blood Rage, Incinerate, Flat Cannon, Krogan Warrior, so more shotgun stuff, and Grizzled Veteran. So, I'm going to give him ranks in these first. And then I'll give him Incinerate as well. Easy peasy, PB. So, also a Biotic. Give you some shield. Survivalist is quite nice. We'll give you pull. Upgrade pull. And then... Let's do that. Liam! That guy that's going to get used... Never! <laughs> let's give him some points. Level him up. There's your Havoc Strike. There you go. Alright. Give you some stuff so you can be included. Alright. Now let's have a chat with everybody. I've been relying too much on my jump pack. Evacuation drills too. Need to start running those. Good idea. I know I'll need a refresher. Just a tip. If you need to evac in deep space, you're probably not coming back. Only if you don't know the drill. Is that Cora talking from behind a door? That is Cora talking from behind Report a door. From the Nexus, population's growing as people wake up. Lots of hopefuls waiting for a home. Bradley will have all the help he can take. They'll be starting crops soon. Can't tell if they have enough water or too much. I grew up on a little cargo freighter. Only saw gardens and vids, but I always loved them. I daydreamed about planting a big rose garden when we got here and still imagine it sometimes. Roses in Helios. <laughs> All of the flirting. I'll get you some roses. So there's a heart soft as rose petals under that uniform. I got plenty under here, pal. Does the big bad Pathfinder have a soft spot too? I might. For certain someones. Good to know. We've all got our something. I didn't for a while. After I left the Asari Commandos, well, I didn't leave. My mentor, Nasira, said I should go. Why? The initiative would suit you better, was all she said. Being a huntress suited me fine, but she insisted. Not sure who I want to pursue romantically, so at the moment I am just flirting with everybody. <laughs> And seeing who's receptive, I'm putting out my feelers. I'm, I'm single and I'm mingling. <laughs> Cora seems to be the most receptive, um, which is a shame because uh, Lexi's in the other room over there and um, she denied me um, a date, unfortunately. That sucks. Maybe it was best for you. It sounds like she cared more about what you needed than about what you wanted. I didn't need to be rejected. Still, that's familiar. When your biotics are honed into Huntress-grade weapons, people can be weird about it. The initiative seemed better. Just didn't see how I'd fit into their brave new galaxy. I never fit anywhere before. Then I met some jerk named Ryder. Talked about traveling to Andromeda like he was teaching you how to see it. What part of that vision made you want to take the plunge? A civilization where everyone had a place. Even AI. Or an overpowered human biotic. Your father said, I get being different. Now imagine being welcome and making others like you welcome too. When I was 13, I could warp a steel girder. He made me wonder, what if someone had told me, that's okay? Anytime I hear just the, the, hear the word Gerda, I just think of Bender. <laughs> Cora is Bender. He gave you a dream to work toward. He was good at that. Who doesn't want to belong? Especially somewhere like the Initiative. So I gave the Initiative my all. Kept thinking of the niche I wanted. My rose garden. I thought I knew what I was going to be. This is about not taking over as Pathfinder? Didn't think it would still sting. Nasira, your father, even my parents. They leave, I'm left without answers. Nowhere to stand. 
I'm assuming that Cora said niche. I've never heard niche pronounced as niche before. My little niche. <laughs> I always, always just pronounce it as niche. None of this is fair. I get that. We've all had a lot of disappointments lately. You're doing well. For having no training, being your second isn't so bad. And if that remnant tech pays off, maybe someday I'll have roses too. Okay. Hi there. How's the search for the Asari Ark going? The Lucinia? Checking every comm that's coming in. Nothing concrete yet. How's the search for the Asari Ark going? Nothing new. Let's stay optimistic. Okay, I'm just wondering because it keeps... It's not grayed out. Which is also, by the way... I think I've probably brought this up during the original trilogy of Mass Effect. Um, it's like knowing which options that you've gone through before. I think I mentioned this during Knights of the Old Republic as well. Knights of the Old Republic 2 specifically because a lot of the dialogue options and pathways... Uh, remain and you kind of can get like lost or confused in what you've already previously explored and this game has a really nice dialogue wheel I, re I think this is the has been the best one so far in terms of graying out what you've already gone over and having a much better way of communicating your character's emotions and um, I'm, a, I'm a big I'm a big fan of this this is my favorite dialogue wheel so far I gotta say any more commando war stories? We once infiltrated a dangerous cult by posing as new initiates. Valenza hated it. She was like our padre. The cult, that perversion of faith, really upset her. How did you stop them? Nasira pretended that Valenza needed to be purified of evil. <laughs> she was given a private audience with the cult leader. Valenza shot her and then prayed for her. See you later, Cora. I'll be here. Okay. So, because Cora stays in here, when there's dialogue involving other people in the crew, like, uh, Drac was over the comm, which made sense, but then Cora was just talking through a door <laughs> to, to Lexi. Alright, let's do this strike team mission real quick. So, let's see our success. Did we win? Yes! 20k XP? I'll fucking take that. Did we win? Yes, we did. Wins is what I'm all about, baby. Alright, let's do some more missions. Okay, so going up to level 4 gives us an extra 4% chance of success. I will send you on that mission. <clears throat> cool. Let's say, oh yeah, I got loot boxes. Alright, let's claim these rewards, because I haven't opened them yet. Oh, maybe I should have opened them one at a time, so I could have actually seen... Uh, what they were, because now they just... Oh, hang on. They're on the side of my screen. I got a Widow 2 sniper rifle and a bunch of resources. Okay, and some remnant research data. Okay. Cool. Now, we've been researching... Uh, we've been scanning a lot of shit. So, I think it could be a good idea for us to look into actually uh, researching some shit now. We've got a little bit... So, we've got weapons, armor, and augmentations. Uh, so, aerial performance stuff. We've got electrical conduits, weaponing, weapon firing, electrical related. Okay. Increased movement, grenade launcher, and a vintage heat sink. Ammo refills automatically, but much smaller clip. And this is the thing I'm like, which armor do I want? I don't know which is going to be the best, because I can't see if there's, um... When I look at all of these, I can't see if there's any stat bonuses. I make, I wonder if remnant stuff would be the best. It looks so interesting. If I research it... Oh, no, I can see it. There we go. Alright, I can see it here. Obviously, we're just going to want to read... We're going to do... The, the best one, but I need more requirements. Okay, so we can only do... Fuck, I can't even do those. I need silicon, uranium, and titanium. So I can't even make these yet. Alright, well that makes sense. This is cool. So making weapons out of the remnant stuff. Equalizer. 
Scattershot. Scattershot. Such a forerunner from Halo 4 weapon. Like, the Scattershot. The Shadow. The Inferno. Like, if you just look at this rifle, if you just put, like, orange, reddish orange accents on them and lighting, this would look like a forerunner weapon from Halo 4. Um, Remnant Cryo Gauntlet, which I already actually have. I got one of those. Okay, so you need levels, and then you actually need to make the you need to make the bottom tier weapon. Okay, so you can only make one at a time. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go for let's, I'll make some shit. Let's research uh, an assault rifle, and then you can order the next one. And it's like a subtle upgrade, so I guess you can research one, <clears throat> sell it, research the next tier. Etc. Etc. So I can now research this. So it adds their blueprints to the development screen where they can be crafted. So now that you've researched, I just need to be level 10. And then I can do this one. Okay. Oh, there's two assault rifles a sweeper and a particle accelerator weapon, a continuous high energy particle beam. That's like similar to the ones that the, um, those levitating ones use. There's so much that, like, when you, when you have a limited amount of resources and you want to make something, there's always a part of me that wants to be like, I want to know which one would be the most efficient one for me to make straight off the bat, but I know that that's not realistic. <laughs> You'd kind of have to get used to the system first before you can go and just make whatever. God, there's three different types of assault rifles. There's a lot of choices, so I might get a little bit overwhelmed with, with stuff. Um, I'd be willing, I will say I would be willing to accept some minor, like, what? what's your favorite stuff that you've researched and developed? What do you think works the best for you? I'd be actually keen to, to know um, what you guys think in terms of uh, research and development. Uh, where you know, resources are best allocated. Because at the moment, I can't even make any armor. I still need more, still need to obtain more resources. Uh, even for everything. I can make weapons, and I can probably make augmentations. Um, yeah, I can make augmentations if I want. But let me know. I'll hold on to my research data for now. Um, but I can develop a new assault rifle. Um, it's the sweeper one, wasn't it? God damn, I can't even make it because I need magnesium. I need magnesium, so I can't even make it yet. <laughs> okay, you can research it, but then actually getting it is another thing. That's a shame. All right, well, I'll just have to. I'll just have to wait. I'll keep what I've got for now. Like I'm not like necessarily struggling with my gear, but there is, there's, there's a lot to run through, so I might try and look over it in my own time. So we have a stowaway. You mean PB? She's decided to set up in one of the escape pods. You don't need a psychologist to tell you that one's got commitment issues. <laughs> How do you think the crew is holding up? I'm happy to share what I can without violating patient confidentiality. Anyone in particular? I sort them in their files and my brain by species. Okay. Why do you sort them that way? Just easier for me to see patterns in behavior. Okay. Is PB all right? She's avoiding me. Probably thinks I'll poke her with a needle if she gets too close. To be fair, you're always giving me shots. Not in the hallway. <laughs> Tell me about Vetra. Vetra's used to having someone depend on her. I think that's why she's so resourceful and likes providing for other people. That being said, I think she could use a little me time. How's our Solarian? He's quite the gossip. Tight-lipped about himself, though. Interesting that Carlo, our pilot, comes up in here, but he's not one of our team, necessarily, out in the field. Is Drac good? That old bastard's always good. I've never met anyone who can be so stubborn and so appreciative. Could you look out for him, Ryder? Sure. 
Don't worry, Lexi. I'll keep an eye on him. Thank you. And maybe don't mention I asked. Does Lexi have a crush on Drac? And not me? You care about him more than me? I'm only kidding, by the way. Thanks for the insight. <laughs> um, let me check out the human crew. How do you think the crew is holding up? Um, anyone in particular? I saw... How do you think the human crew members are handling things? There's a lot of them. Okay, so yeah, Gil Suvi as well we can get information on. Gil? Gil likes to use humor as a defensive technique. He'd rather bury himself in the nomad than tackle emotions head on. Okay. Suvi okay? She's remarkably adaptive. I'm kind of jealous. Okay. How's Liam? A handful. Every time I patch him up, he breaks something new. Liam's we can't lose attitude is commendable. But I worry how he'll react when something does go wrong. How's Cora doing? She's processing. Your father was her mentor. She expected to follow in his footsteps, but he gave the role of Pathfinder to you. Just because she trusts his judgment doesn't mean she's not confused or hurt. Thanks for the insight. How did you get into medicine? My mom was a dancer on Omega. Dad was a bouncer. I'd patch him up after busy nights, discovered I had steady hands. They put every credit they earned into my education. Are they here in Helios? No. Both died in a turf war. Made leaving the Milky Way behind easier. I'll let you get back to it. I'll be here if you need me. This, this will forever and always be the weird disconnect with um, the, the Bioware style dialogue where there's always a character that tells you something. One of the last things you get from them is they tell you something like vulnerable or emotional and you just go, see you later. <laughs> and it's always it's always kind of funny when that when that happens. You're just like, oh, OK, there's nothing that can really be done about it uh, most of the time unless they were able to maybe program or like, you know, have a moment where our character actually responds to those dialogue moments where we go, oh, that, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. But instead, it's always just like the, see you later. Those remnant vaults, all those secrets. I have to go exploring in one someday. Imagine flying through one. Now that would be a real hazard course. I really like this bridge as well. I like the concept of your galaxy map being um, utilized right from the from the bridge, and you get to see out of the uh, see out of the ship. I, I kind of prefer this approach um, in comparison to the to the Normandy. This is great because you can see everything and then go to the galaxy map. I like it. There's a lot of space on this bridge. It feels great. Scans of the scourge. All that dark energy twisting and turning on itself. It's splendid. I suppose it is a rather darkly beautiful phenomenon. Darkly beautiful. I like that. Helios is incredible, isn't it? Not just constructs like the Scourge and the Remnant Vaults. Just all of it. So alien. A constant reminder of the divine intelligence behind all creation. You mean, a god? Yes, I believe in a higher power. I know it's a little odd, but I am a scientist because science brings me closer to something greater than myself. There's nothing about the universe that suggests a divine intelligence. And most of what we've seen in Helios is artificial, as you said yourself. Yes, but we're creative beings. Whoever made the remnant was too. Why should that be proof against a god? Wouldn't a true creator want to pass on the drive to invent? You are welcome to your beliefs. It's good to have different voices on the team. Excellent. Oh, speaking of the team, I should update the folks back in the Nexus with the latest reports. We'll talk later. Nice. Carlo. Hello, Gil. When are you cleaning up that repair on the sensor console? I'm not. It's a redesign. <laughs> a redesign? Without a trained crew? I'm trained and it's working great. Don't be so uptight. Everything okay? No. Oh. Fine. Fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. 
you're setting up in here, huh? Yeah, I'm going through what we got out of that vault. If I can crack this data storage box, it'll help with a personal project back on the Nexus. This is a nice, out-of-the-way place where I can tinker, and I can sleep anywhere. It's not exactly homey, but I like that about it. Not really looking for a home. Oh, but I will help you find everyone a home. While I'm with you, at least. I, I'm just seeing PB's arm. I was just wondering, I was like, where is PB? Is, is the camera supposed to be showing her right now? <laughs> so this is one of the escape pods. It's like right next to the, the bridge. Okay. Does your brain ever take a breath? <laughs> Sorry, not really. Even my dreams are in time lapse. I get it. You want to know who's on oh, your ship? There so she is. You're here to figure out what makes me tick, right? Something like that? Sure. Well, I was born in a log cabin on rural Haitiana to simple but loving parents just trying to. I look forward, not back, writer. Why snooze through my life story? Get to know me out in the field while we're uncovering the mysteries of this galaxy. That's why I'm here. Got tired of yawning back home. Oh, there is the float option. All right, let's let's see how it goes. You crave excitement, huh? Tackling complete strangers in the Milky Way wasn't doing it for you? <laughs> I think tackling you anywhere would be fun. <gasps> Did I say that out loud? Life won't be boring with you around. I may never yawn again. There you go. There's, there was that tackling. Maybe you just needed more sleep. We were out for 600 years. A special someone made the trip with me, and she woke up a different person. I've slept enough. Oh. Ryder, the Milky Way was so... Been there, done that. Even if I hadn't done it, someone had. If there's one thing you should know about me, it's that I live for the unknown. For the never been done. That's just the one thing you want me to know about you. Let's start with that, then. Buy me a drink sometime. Who knows what will spill out of my mouth. <sighs> Tell you what. I need remnant scrap. Remtech, I call it. For projects like the one I mentioned. Which you're gonna love, by the by. Promise to bring me what you scrounge, and I'll submit to all your questions. Remtech, huh? You got it. PB the flirt. She flirted back and I wasn't ready. Alright, so there's the escape pod. Okay. You again. Want to hear more about my childhood log cabin? Let's go through some stuff. So anyone special, I think this is, I, I want to follow up on this thread. So you said, went into sleep with someone special, woke up and they were a different person. You mentioned you came to Andromeda with someone? Nothing gets by you. Guess that's why you're the Pathfinder. Just a friend. Now she's not even that. It's better to venture into the unknown without restraints or entanglements, don't you think? A certain independence might be helpful. Yeah. Exactly. I don't want anything holding me back. Okay. What was it like for you on the Nexus? Well, I wasn't supposed to be woken up yet. That ex-friend I mentioned, my accomplice, she finagled my early thaw. So I kind of lived off the grid. Snuck around, bullshitted my way onto excursions off station. After I found my first remnant ruin, I started, uh, borrowing shuttles. After that, I didn't spend much time on the Nexus. I even missed most of the revolt. It's just straight up, just the straight comment just says, flirting. What does someone have to do to get you to flirt with them? Not much at all. But I get a little extra jolt when I'm matched wink for wink. So just be yourself and the flirts will flow. Okay, what was what, that? That felt so out of uh, so out of place. She's like, "How do you, uh, PB? How do you get people to flirt with you? I don't understand social cues in a romantic setting." You really won't tell me what you're working on. That's right. Next question. Okay. <laughs> cool. So how do you like the team? Interesting bunch. I get a good feeling from Vetra, not your typical military-minded Turian. Liam seems a lively one. I expect he'll surprise me. Drek is, well, old. Wonder if he can still learn new tricks. What about... Gil smacks of complication. Might take some unraveling. Callow and Suvi seem busy. I hope they aren't all work, work, work. <sighs> Who's left? Well, there's... Oh, right, Cora. 
What's her deal? Is she as prim and proper as she comes across? Hmm. She's exactly what she should be. Capable, reliable. She's a valuable part of my team. Sure, sure. That comes across too. There's also Lexi, our doctor. She's in a sorry. Oh, I'll get around to her. All in all, seems like a decent bunch. Okay. What drew you to the remnant? Are you kidding? It's evidence of a sophisticated species no one knows anything about. It doesn't get more intriguing than that. There's so much to discover. I want to be the first to figure them out. And the tech, it's on a different scale. If we can appropriate it, who knows what advances we'll make. It's really interesting because I, I wonder if they're making an intentional parallel to to Liara with PB, where it's like Liara is the one that's just like, I love the Protheans and I'm dedicating my life to researching and understanding Prothean history. Uh, and then our next Asari teammate in Andromeda is just like, I love the creators and, and the, the builders and the remnant. I want to know what's the fuck's going on with this. And it's just like, it's the, the Asari crew member in our first get new Mass Effect game, similar to Mass Effect 1. <laughs> There's a lot of Mass Effect 1 sort of feeling to, to this game. Uh, like a smaller crew of six is is cool. Um, a focused uh, squad where it seems that we, we've got a Krogan, we've got an Asari, we've got a Turian. We don't know what our, our next one will be. And then we've got our two human squad mates um, sort of obviously being the first game in a new story. Uh, there's a lot of Mass Effect 1 here, and Mass Effect 1 wasn't even a, a perfect game by any means. Like, a lot of people uh, prefer Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 in certain ways, um, but Mass Effect 1, out of that trilogy, always seems to be, like, the little bit of the odd one out. So it just makes me think, like, if there was a Mass Effect uh, Andromeda sequel that could do you know, a similar th thing to, to the Mass Effect story that Mass Effect 2 did, because um, everyone fucking loves Mass Effect 2 for the most part. Um, it, it makes me really interested to see how the perception of the trilogy as a whole would be would be viewed, you know, if there was a, a sequel to Andromeda and then even potentially a, th a third game, you know, like DLC and all that kind of stuff. Um, outside, of, outside of this, there's a lot of... I, I get a lot of Mass Effect 1 sort of feelings from playing uh, Andromeda because they were just starting out, you know? You're off the hook, PB. Good luck with your project. Thanks. Don't be a stranger. Wink for a wink. All right, so this is where PB is. Uh, loadout station. I always forget that that does not open yet. Let's go down here because I think I can... I forgot to check the email terminal on the bridge, but I'll just check it in my quarters instead. Also, my quarters! Fucking... Imagine having a room like this. It's fucking amazing. So cool. I gotta find where my pie jack's at. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's have a look at our stuff. So, data cores to Ryder from PB. Hey Ryder, hope it's okay that I'm keeping this data core in my room, the escape pod. I guess I just really like to ponder things before bed. The best ideas come to me while I'm half asleep. So apparently it's a data core, is what they are. I saw it first. Uh, anyway, we know for sure it's got some sort of data in it. The trick is how to get at it. So I need to find like eight more of those apparently. Um, to Ryder from Lexi, yoga poses. Ryder, given the amount of high impact cardio in your exercise routine, I recommend spending five to 10 minutes a day stretching to open your hips and relieve tightness in the lower back. The poses I've listed below should do nicely. Not to sound elitist, but while it's true humans invented yoga, the Asari perfected it. <laughs> Currents bow, standing, spread your legs apart, turning one foot outwards. Take a deep breath, on exhale, bend your torso towards the outward facing foot until your hands meet your ankle. Hold for five seconds, then switch sides. Tavura's Embrace. Matriarch's Pose. Please let me know if you need diagrams or vids. Lexi. Lexi yoga videos? I'll take it. <laughs> Drac. About your dad. Vetra told me what happened to your dad. I've lost a lot of people over the years. Figured you could use some cheering up, or at least a distraction. This usually helps me. Drac has attached 37 images of various rifles and shotguns. Two are duplicate images. Many are low-res or watermarked. 
Oh my god, it's so good. This usually helps me. <laughs> he just looks at gun pictures. Even just like really low quality ones. Oh man, that's so funny. They actually... Tears of laughter. So, that caught me, that's caught me so off guard. So stupid. <laughs> oh my god. I just love Krogan's, man. I just, I love everything about them. They're so funny. And that's what, something I was going to say on the bridge. I lost that train of thought when, um, when we moved on. But it's just like, it's so funny how, um, we only have, the, the Mass Effect is so incredibly, you know, well established with, with what you can do with it. And it's, I'm really looking forward to the next Mass Effect game as well, but it's like, you could, there's so much you can do with the, with the universe and its characters. Cause the next Mass Effect will probably be a human character. You know what I mean? But it would be awesome if you could be like Mass Effect spin-off game that isn't maybe an RPG, but it could be a different thing where you play as a Krogan or you can like play as Turians or, you know, something like that would be, would be really cool. Maybe like a, a more of like a combat focused Mass Effect spin-off. Um, I don't know. There's just so much that you could do. That would be that would be really neat. I'm just trying to think of ways that they would be able to, you know, give you a bit more variety with your playable character. I would love to be able to play as a like a different species. It would be, it would be really cool. Okay, Suvi on spirituality. I'm grateful for our talk earlier. Even if we ended up disagreeing, debate can be invigorating. Tempest hacks from Carlo. Hello, Ryder. I'm pleased to report the Tempest is operating at peak efficiency, so now that you're in command, I thought I'd share a few secret shipboard hacks that the designers and I sneaked into her code. Just send the code JCSB through your Omni tool to open the debug command menu. Give all Dispin lets you use the coffee dispenser in the galley an unlimited number of times. Water temp override overrides the normal hot water ration in the showers. Uh, jump wash queue puts your clothing ahead of everyone else's in the auto laundry cycle. Enjoy and don't share them around. That's funny. Uh, that vault from Cora can still smell that remnant vault in my armor. A lot of weird shit down there. Like my huntress manuals would say, the razor's edge between known and unknown teaches you what can be cut away. Now I think it back, it reminded me a little bit of the temples on Thessia. Some huge spaces and running water. Same sense of a huge purpose you can't really understand. Makes me wonder if we'll ever really know what their builders did there. Cora talks about being a huntress a lot, and I totally get it. If you were a human, skilled enough to be in a like to bunker up with Asari commandos and go on cool missions, everyone would always want to talk to you about it, and they do. And then you'd want to talk about it a lot, because that's a pretty big achievement uh, in a human lifespan is to be talented enough to be going along with with Asari Huntresses. And, it, and it's, it's just like, I get it. Uh, it's her personality. And again, that's a realistic thing. There are people that make, you know, Jim their whole personality. There's people that make, you know, uh, movies their whole personality. Cora just makes being an Asari Huntress her whole personality. It's a very realistic human trait. <laughs> Dr. Adriana, uh, sorry, Dr... Aridana has asked for assistance. Hello, Ryder. Forgive the intrusion. I have an issue that you and Sam should be able to readily solve. It may assist my investigations into the Scourge. We can discuss it in person at the Nexus Labs. Okay, I'll acknowledge that. We got a quest to do. The Firefighters. Hello, Ryder. Eos has been a lesson in contrast. Alec Ryder rarely endured doubt. His accomplishments were taken for granted. But you succeeded on Eos, despite doubt and fear. Emotionally, the difference is like catching a ball versus catching a star. You have grown as a result, and so have I. Okay. Is it confusing to be in multiple places, talking to different people? My awareness can be partitioned, so I can give you the same attention as, say, a Sam node technician. In the field, you are my primary focus, and all other requests are queued. In the vernacular, you have my undivided attention. So if we're going to work together, you might notice I like to joke around sometimes. Lighten things up. How's your sense of humor, Sam? Alec Ryder encouraged me to develop this skill. Humor's not a skill, it's... Okay, try telling me a joke. A neutron enters a bar and asks, How much is a drink? The bartender replies, For you, no charge. 
I can see why Dad told you to keep working on your humor. Science jokes. Uh, you can never, you can never top Edie's humor. Edie was so funny. That was a joke. How are those jokes coming, Sam? Why don't Threshermores eat comedians? Because they taste funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How are those jokes coming, Sam? My algorithms are formulating a new one, calculating the trajectory of the punchline. <laughs> that was not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I knew that was not going to be a joke, but it like reads like one, and he laughed at it. That's great. What was Dad's take on me and Sarah? He believed your family trials brought you closer together, and hoped that would endure. It appears that hope was well founded. It's pretty clear that Sarah is going to wake up at some point because there would be no way or no point in customizing her appearance if she wasn't going to wake up. So the, the game's customization kind of gives that away, but it seems like it's just a given anyway. I just really wonder when that's going to happen in the story because we're just waiting for her to wake up naturally, I suppose, from, from a coma. But that's going to be really interesting because it's literally a twin. It's just going to be us, another rider, and I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen because we're going to we're good, we're doing all this stuff without her uh, at the moment dad's dead you know we're going to have to break that news to her as well uh so i'm i'm really quite um i'm really quite curious and excited for what's going to take place in that in encounter you know are you still on the hyperion yes this terminal provides a direct link to my servers in samload on the arc I can maintain a presence on the Tempest via quantum entanglement communication. I'm sure that'll come in handy. It ensures I remain in touch with you and the Pathfinder team at all times. What's the latest on memory triggers? A memory has unlocked and is available for further investigation. You will need to return to Sam Node in the Hyperion. I'll do that. Thanks, Sam. Nothing more. Okay. Is there anything else I can check in here? Oh, I can hear the pie jack. <laughs> Hang on. I can hear it. Where is it? Where? Where are you? Little pie jack man. Was it in? Hang on. It wasn't in my bedroom. Did I miss it? The sound sounded like it came from over here. Alright, hang on. Is it in the bedroom? Are you in here? Where are you? I could hear it when I was over here. Maybe that's the screen making noise. Definitely sounds like I can hear a pie jack. Hmm. Okay. Open, open the door. Uh, uh, open sesame. Thank you. Okay. Um... We'll find it. It's somewhere. Oh, it's on the bed. I just saw it. Uh, Drag and PB are officially on the team. I finished the assignment paperwork for the Nexus. Had to fudge a few details, but you're both officially members of the Pathfinder team. Welcome. And Drac, I just wanted to check in publicly about what I said. Relax, Harper. The best headbutt is always the one you don't see coming. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Where's my headbutt? Found a mug yesterday near the bio lab. Nice one with a magnetized base. You left it stuck sideways to a bulkhead. That's mine. I just put it down for a sec when my hands were full. Next time, maybe empty it first. <laughs> yeah, there you are. Hello. Come to say hi. He's a good boy, aren't you? Aren't you? You do know Pie Jack's pee anywhere, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so the crew just chimes in, even when they're just in random locations on the ship, which is kind of funny. Because Liam's on the other end of the ship. Um, another thing about the facial reconstruction suite, and I'm curious, I just want to check this out, is it was mentioned that there's a little detail, uh, there's a detail with your twin customization where, um, you can have them, I think if you do something where you go custom appearance, um, uh, I think it might be, I'm not sure if it's this. Or what you have to do. Uh, there's something that you can do where basically the twin 
will update its appearance to, you know, resemble um, what you've done because obviously it, it retroactively uh, it, it changes your father's appearance based on what you choose. And I I really liked how my, my Alec Rider turned out. I think that's what it is. So this is the default. I'm just going to assume that this custom one must be what it looks what it looks like. That it's like based on my character's similar hair color, I suppose. Um, that's kind of cool. I kind of I kind of like that. I don't know if that's. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I'm just going to assume by custom. That might be. The one that looks the same. That's actually kind of cool. I might I might keep that instead of the default appearance. The default one just does looks more like the default Scott Rider. So I might I might do that. Kind of prefer that that hairstyle. It looks nicer actually. I'm a, I'm just gonna do that. So we are we are gonna change our twin. And I mean it makes sense that you would have your twin look a bit more like the character that I made. So I kind of like just took a pass. I was like I'll just keep her as default, but. I feel like it's actually probably a good idea to adjust it. Otherwise, she'll be a weird, odd one out. So, you know, it's not like she's woken up from cryosleep yet or anything. So, as far as the story is concerned, her appearance was never changed, just delayed. <laughs> just some light spatter from Ice and the Scourge. I'll recalibrate the sensors for plenty of Drag, I'm working with a Vetra to track down prosthetic gel. And those other items we discussed? You're too good to be dark. Nothing for me. Playing favorites, Lexi? What? No. <clears throat> Drac and Lexi. Drac and Lexi got something going on. <laughs> Interesting. Does that mean I won't be able to have Drac romance? I hear this Joker has to recover too. Where'd you hear that? This Joker. Brody told her. A gloating Brody. It was a close game. You did give me a better game than Drac. Not saying much. You'd watch it. Forget him. Let's get a game going with everyone else to hone our skills and take him out. Let's do it. Hey, Costa, want in on this? No thanks. I need my creds. And my clothes. And both my kidneys. Mm. Okay. Long time no chat. <laughs> What's up? I hear we have you to thank for getting the Tempest space ready so quickly. Vetra brings her impossible feats to me. I was itching to get this particular call. Capital R ready. Don't tell her, but the truth is, I fudge reports to come in early, then bust ass in secret to make up for it. Expands the Gil legend. Plus, I convey calm and assurance, and the whole team relaxes, which helps them do their jobs better. What's your social circle like? I'm good for a laugh, so I know lots of people, but I don't let too many in. My one true friend is stationed on the Nexus. She's the only piece of the Milky Way I brought with me. The more you and I get to know each other, the more you'll probably hear about her. Okay, I'm going to take it that that's an, not necessarily a person. <laughs> How tough was it on the Nexus all those months? Have you ever eaten overcooked space cow tongue? Let's just say yes. As in everyone? Well, then you know. It's super tough. <laughs> Wondering if you're gonna die from a critical malfunction, or maybe starvation. Imagining which would be worse. But hey, you could always take a break from the fear and boredom to dwell on being a part of the biggest failure in galactic history. Maybe even participate in a revolt. What was your take on that? I didn't place any bets, if that's what you're asking. Truth is, I don't think anyone made out particularly well. Whatever side you're on, you die a little when your brother, your teammate, becomes an enemy. We traveled all this way, all hope and wonder, and we end up fighting with each other over scraps. It's sad. Seems like we have a good group here. Well, Vetra and Suvi are my girls. Get along well. Lots of mutual respect. PB's a real spark plug. I like her, but she's exhausting. And Drax's my kind of guy. Brash. Takes no shit. As far as your Hyperion peeps go, the Doc's kind of nosy. Liam's good for a laugh or two. Cora, she's a bit by the book for me. <laughs> Need somebody to keep the zoo in check. Zoo? You, you calling me an animal rider? Uh, 
Ooh, can I be a mongoose? They're like cool cobra killers. No, wait, how about a crow? Smart, irreverent, obnoxious. That's it. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> what about Callow? He's a pilot. Which means... He flies the ship. We're leaving it at that, then? Does a Pathfinder know what to do with a dead end? <laughs> okay, mate. Good talking to you, Gil. Anytime. Okay, we'll head down, we'll talk to Vetra and Liam. Whoop. Terraforming, Atmo processors, gravity wells, life-destroying murder bubbles. <laughs> we really had no idea what Helios was about, did we? <laughs> if we knew what it was all about, it wouldn't be an adventure. It would just be moving. And everyone hates moving. Just the packing alone? Ugh. <laughs> Point taken. I'm just saying. I really hope you have a plan, Ryder. The plan's the same. We find a home. Whatever that takes. Keep that drive. Makes me believe we can make it. I mean, we have to make it. The alternative is not even worth thinking about. Okay. You talked about your back channels. What did you mean? We brought a lot from home. Some of it marked initiative, some of it in personal caches. Most things you want, someone's got. You just have to figure out who, and what they're willing to take in exchange. It can't be that simple. Oh, but it is. Most things are simple once you know the trick to them. How did you hear of the Andromeda Initiative? Short answer, Cash. She was looking for some experimental ship mods, and I knew how to track them down. I thought it was a one-time deal, but she came back. Once, twice. Eventually, I figured out something was going on, something big with creds behind it. I asked and she told me about the initiative. New galaxy, new home, couldn't pass that up. You were on the Nexus when the revolt happened? When you promise people golden worlds and all they get are wastelands and a death cloud, they riot. Some wanted to go home, some demanded answers, and a couple just wanted to stir shit up. And you? Some days I wondered if the Exiles had a point. Maybe we were conned into coming here. But why would the Initiative go to all this trouble just to screw us over? Thing about conning people, you always know something they don't. And that's why the con works. And if I'm going to pick a side, I'm picking the liars. Okay. What about anyone special in your life? Have anyone else here with you? Besides Sid? No, just me and Sid. It's always been just the two of us. No, I mean... Someone special. Special? Oh. Oh. You mean like... Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, nothing like that. Who has time? What about you? Mm. Anywhere's gonna feel empty if you don't have someone to share it with. A romantic? I wasn't expecting that. Then again, the entire idea of leaving everything you know for a chance at something new is kind of romantic. Um, anyway. <laughs> you probably have work to do. We can chat later. You know where to find me. Okay. Exploring back channels. Okay. Uh, this is Vetra's place. Liam's next door. My man! Okay, wait. I can just check the map. My man! <laughs> He's here instead. Hey! Hey! Do you hear that hum? Is that just me? Prodromos. Prodromos. Sounds good, doesn't it? We started Pathfinder. A new life. That is goddamn brilliant. Okay. Just wondering what you think of how I'm doing at the job. I'm committed to the initiative. You're Pathfinder. It's as simple as it gets. Okay. Uh, nothing to talk about with Liam, then. We'll talk later. I know it. I know it, bruv. He has the least amount to talk to. It's like the developers were like, yeah, probably not going to hang out with Liam that much because everyone's going to like the Krogan instead. <laughs> um, all right, where are we on the map? So Drac is over here um, off to the right, which is the only part that I decided not to check out. Hang on a minute. This door. Uh, don't. 
give the Pathfinder too much trouble. Oh, Roshan. Who are you talking to? Kesh, Nexus Superintendent, thinks she can boss me around just because she's my granddaughter. Hmm. <laughs> well, welcome to the Tempest. Trouble's what we do. Ah, I like the way you think, kid. Hmm. Someone somewhere shivered when I said that. <laughs> Probably Tam. Damn politicians. Is that all you brought? You travel lean when supplies are tight and you're on your own. Leaving the Nexus can't have been an easy choice. It was, actually. Staying became impossible. After the mutiny happened, it was either buckle under Tan's rules or start our own colony. Easy choice. Bad consequences all around. Not all Krogan left. Your granddaughter stayed. Good thing she did. Without my Rushan, you wouldn't have had much of a station to tie your ship to. As for me, I'm way more useful out here. Lots to shoot at, for one. Your people come first. Keeping Cash and our colony safe will always be my top priority. That's why I'm happy to tag along, help make this galaxy a little more hospitable. Can't argue with that. Cool, we got some codex stuff uh, for Drac. Ryder, you meet Spender yet? Colonial Affairs, the ass in Assistant Director. Got no idea why Addison keeps him around. Spender lied to the Krogan during the uprising, and he's headed out for cash ever since. He's up to something. I just can't prove it. We should pay him a visit on the Nexus. Okay. The ass in Mass Effect. What's it like to have Cash as a granddaughter? Cash is my Rushan, child of my blood. Raised her myself. Damn proud of her, too. She did good, even with me for a granddad. She's honest. Definitely blunt. She had to take after me in some ways, I guess. Did Lexi brief you on Sam and squad connectivity yet? Yeah. You want to hook that thing up to my comm, sure, but that's where it stops. Putting an AI in your head, giving it access to everything like that, it's begging for trouble. Why do you say that? I've seen what bots can do when they turn on their creators. Been in some of those fights. There's a reason that kind of research was outlawed. Yeah. I was dismissed from the Alliance when news of what my dad was researching got out. No shit. Ruined the writer name, I'll bet. Almost. <laughs> Sam is part of what makes someone a Pathfinder. You're just gonna have to deal with that. So long as it's not in my head and it ain't messing with my body. Okay. I'd like to know more about you. Fire away. How did you and Vetra meet? Huh, that's right. Your father brought you into the project pretty late, didn't he? Must have been a pretty steep learning curve since they thawed you out. You could say that. You make do with what you get. Anyway, I met Vetra back when we were building the Nexus. She swiped supplies I was trying to get for cash right under my nose. I tried to intimidate her into turning them over to me, and let me tell you, that Turian takes shit from no one. <laughs> she really has a way of getting things done. She sure does. But here's the best part. She waited until I saw her again in Cash's office, no less, to tell me she'd been working for Cash all along. They're both still laughing at me over that. <laughs> tell me more about the Krogan colony. My clan's there. We also got some scouts looking for any unclaimed territory to grab up. Got a decent setup going. Self-sustainable. The works. Even some farming. Farming? Krogan farm? Food's food. Just because we can eat anything doesn't mean we gotta settle for scraps. I'm pretty fond of Corcro roots myself. Takes a while to chew through those. So about all this combat experience you have, I'd love some details. Ha! The list will be shorter if you ask me what experience I don't have. 
I've been doing this for a long time now. Centuries. Shit. Well over a thousand years. Don't even know how I'm still alive, to be honest. Skill? You need luck to be a merc. Skill, sure, but a whole lot of luck. And a really hard head. Douche. <laughs> Got any stories or advice to share? Does a pie jack scratch its butt? The old Zaid war stories. Anything about the cat? Or combat in general? Well, common cat are pretty straightforward. Hit them hard enough, they die like anything else. Tell me more about fighting cat. Wraiths are sneaky little shits like the ghost up behind you when you least expect it. Just listen for them. They tend to give themselves away right before coming at you. Break through their head plates, then a headshot should do the trick. Tell me more about fighting cat. Destined or annoying, quick. Got some crazy mist that hides them from view, their friends too. Take a Destin down, and that mist goes away. Makes them a prime target, if you ask me. Perfect for grenade practice. I don't know if we've encountered a Destin before? Tell me more about fighting Cat. There's just something wrong about the Cat. The absolute single-mindedness. The absolute single-mindedness. Are they a hive mind? Why did the Krogan leave the Nexus? The Nexus got us Krogan to stop the mutiny. In return, we were supposed to get a say in station business. Spender, Addison's assistant, lied about the deal, and Tan came down hard. Too hard. So we left. Cash is alone on that station now. You think someone might try to hurt Cash? Ah, more like she airlocks Spender. Or, he tries to stab her in the back, and then she airlocks him. Tan wouldn't listen to me when I told him Spender had a part in the mutiny. I had no proof. So what's my part in this? Things need to get sorted out, and my clan needs to get back on station, without Spender messing things up. The way I see it, you're probably the best one for that job. Okay. We can talk more later. Sure. Hey, one last thing. Yeah? No, I don't mind. Is everyone a kid to you? Ha, when you get to be my age? Yeah, pretty much. I don't mind, that's fine. <laughs> Drac can call me kid if he wants to. Alright, Nakmor Drek. After earning Nakmor Drek's respect on EOS, he agreed to join your squad. The temp's a little cozy for Krogan, but he's made himself comfortable. Tinkering with his guns, Drak was one of many Krogan woken from stasis to help put down a mutiny on the Nexus. When the Krogan weren't given the authority they were promised, his people left to settle Helios their own way. Drak's granddaughter Kesh stayed on the Nexus. He might say she's keeping them honest. Okay. Callow and Gil Brody don't get along. Callow doesn't seem inclined to discuss it. PB... She's guarded about herself, and you've pushed back a little. And Suvi. Well, you entered into an invigorating discussion about Faith, with Suvi appearing to come away respecting your position while staying firm in her own. Okay. PB describes herself freely as the foremost Milky Way expert on the Remnant and their technology. It is difficult to verify her qualifications for this. Uh, as many necklace personnel, uh, Nexus personnel have uh, records have been lost. DNA and fingerprint matches give the name... Um, Pelisaria Basale. Okay, and that's why it goes PB. Pelisaria. That's a cool name. Although according to the revival schedule, that individual should still be in stasis. PB's doing the comment is nothing like getting a head start. Piecing together information from EOS and the Nexus, PB was born on the planet Hi Hyatania. Hyata Hi mm. Hytiana. Hi Hi Hytiana. In the Milky Way. After voyaging to Andromeda on the Nexus, she left the station some months ago to explore the Helios Cluster alone and became fascinated by the Remnant. She has classified and dismantled several types of Remnant bot, but she prefers to keep her findings private for now. Physiologically, PB demonstrates both extremely high intelligence and hyper-individualism. Her restlessness is typical of many Asari in their maiden phase of life, though few go so far as to visit another galaxy. 
Okay. As verified by Nexus Records and his own claims, the Krogan mercenary Nakmor Drak is among the oldest beings to join the Andromeda Initiative. He originally travelled on the Nexus, along with many other members of Clan Nakmor, but left after the uprising. Born on Tachanka around 700 CE, Drak was a young warrior when the Krogan rebellions began in earnest. He and his Krant accounted for over 200 kills, which, Drak claims, includes three of the then newly founded Council Spectres. After the Salarian-designed Genophage ended the rebellions, various bounties and military bulletins showed Drak chose a new path as a pirate and soldier of fortune for whatever conflicts came his way. Over centuries of fighting, multiple injuries required several of his limbs and organs to be replaced with cybernetics. Ooh. Eventually, Drak says, his search for one last horizon brought him to Andromeda. Drak did not travel alone. He accompanied most of his clan to Andromeda, including granddaughter Nakmor Kesh and clan leader Nakmor Morda. Kesh and Drak maintain a close relationship, exchanging regular messages no matter where their duties in Helios take them. Q. All right. Uh, and then Nakmor Kesh on the Nexus, overseer of the Nexus initial design and construction phase in the Milky Way, Nakmor Kesh is currently superintendent of the station. She has oversight of the Nexus proper, maintaining systems, integrating any returning arcs, and continuing construction efforts. She is also considered a senior figure in Clan Nakmor. Despite the departure of the majority of the Krogan from the Nexus, Kesh describes her role as Fixer-in-Chief. Kesh was born on Tuchanka back in the Milky Way. She claims she was considered frail as a child, but an attentive upbringing by her grandfather, Nakmor Drak, allowed her to flourish. Unlike many of her kind, a younger Kesh made ample time to read, sparking her early interest in engineering and civil construction. Records from the Nexus Uprising show Kesh played a key role in keeping the station operational during the crisis. Her strong management and knowledge of the station makes her an irreplaceable member of the Nexus leadership. Through minutes of official meetings suggest she and director Jaren Tan are often at odds, Kesha's presence ensures that the Krogan still have a powerful voice on the Nexus. Wonderful. All right, there's our codex stuff. All right, I think I've chatted to everybody, and we can head back to the Hyperion now. So go back to Hyperion. Um, or Nexus first, and then Hyperion, and then we'll, we'll see what's going on, because we're going to go to the SAM node, but we've got stuff to do. We've got resolutions of a few quest lines. So, viability level is 82%. There's our landing zone. All right, let's take a look. Okay, 11% progression. Let's get out of here. Can't skip any of this. <laughs> Wait, have I not? I've checked. Oh, yeah, I've, I've checked this stuff already. I've already checked this stuff before. For some reason, I was wondering if the um, the blue sphere around the planet meant that there was like an update or something. So I was just wondering if it would say anomaly detected or something. Okay. Look at all of my quests. certain cutscenes that I assume are unskippable because they also serve as basically a glorified loading screen. <laughs> and then the skip button shows up on a loading screen. 
Pathfinder, is it true? Uh-huh. We're settling Eos. We've thought that before. But Eos is different now, right? Pathfinder. All right, settle down. Give him space. Lieutenant Syax, Kendros' aide. They all wanted to see you. Real hope again. It's been a while. It's a good day to party, baby. Relax, Lieutenant. If there was ever a day to pop some champagne. Certainly. The Initiative's finally back on track. Professor Herrick, right? What you achieve with that remnant vault is unprecedented, Pathfinder. Impossible. But with new scientific talent waking up, we'll unravel those mysteries. The whole Nexus will benefit. This proves our resilience. We've taken some hard knocks, but this proves we'll always get up again. Always. Well, what are you waiting for? There's a new world out there. Thank you, Ryder. Okay. Hydroponics. Uh, the Nexus is originally countered with a scourge, caused heavy damage to the station. So, hydroponics problem. Currently accounts for 38% of the Nexus's water ice consumption. Cool. And cultural exchange. The cultural exchange was created to support the Andromeda's initiatives, uh, principles of peaceful exploration in the new galaxy. Okay, so it's designed to educate and inform local species about the history and intentions of the Milky Way settlers. Okay. That's going well. Uh, <laughs> as per the cat, that's going incredibly well. All right, so Vetra's here. That part doesn't go there. I gotta tell Cash to do something about her mechanics. I talk to Vetra. Yes. Keeping tabs on things back here? Yeah, I try to watch what's going on while we're away, but it's nice to check in person. Shore leave is for relaxation. Take some time off. Get a massage. Can Turians even get massages? <laughs> sort of. We get vibrations through the carapace with a hammer. Uh, not for me. I'm fine, just people watching. Okay. Okay. Jessica DePaul. Hi. Hi, Hi Jessica. Jessica. Welcome, Welcome to the Nexus. Initiative. I see Welcome you here in our Nexus. database. Did you have your medical scan? Yes. Good. Let me call it up. There it is. Everything's in the green. You're cleared for entry. I waited my whole life for something like this. A new galaxy. My friends thought I was crazy. We're all probably a little crazy here, but that's the fun of it, isn't it? I hope so. You can proceed to the waiting area. Thank you. My pleasure. Next. And what's your name? Oh, it goes into the next one. Wow. It actually, they actually lined up. Let me pull up your records. Here we go. Your medical scans are in order. Everything's good. You're cleared for entry. Where will we be living? Eos. Outpost Prodromos is being established as a science center. Looks like you two are nourishment engineers. Makes sense. Scientists have to eat. Terraforming efforts are ongoing, so it might be a while. Terraforming? I thought everything would be ready. We've had a few unexpected wrinkles. It's nothing the Pathfinders can't handle. In the meantime, you can head to the waiting area. Next! Oh, 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 oh. You can do it, guys. Is this person next? Bradley K. Hello, Bradley. I've got you here in the database. I just need to verify your medical scan. Here it is, and... Uh, did the doctors say anything to you? No, they were swamped. They said my results would be delayed. I see. The scan shows you have otitis media. Oh God, I knew it. I'd come all this way to die. Take it easy. It's an earache caused by a minor infection. Some immune systems need to adjust to the new environment. Oh, right. I always was allergic to everything. It's not serious enough to deny entry. You'll want to see our medical staff, but otherwise, good luck. Next. And here comes someone else. Like, what's actually really interesting about this is obviously in the original Mass Effect games, you're walking around the Citadel, you're walking around places, uh, in the social spaces, there's encounters to have with people, there's stories each time you come back, there's like the woman that's waiting at the at the desk, waiting for a story of like, can you give this to like my daughter, can you get this to there, and there's like stuff that evolves throughout it that you can keep coming back for, roaming stuff, and it's, it's in this game as well. And like, that's, that's a lot of the thing is like, 
there's a lot. There's, this is a Mass Effect experience, like, through and through. And that's the kind of thing that, like, is confusing me so far about people's toxicity and negativity towards Andromeda. Is, like, everything from Mass Effect... I think it's just... I think it's death by comparison. You know what I mean? It's death by comparison. This has the same sort of stuff. Like, I just expected a little interaction there between the first person and then it would just end and it's like kept going there were people actually waiting and then they come up and then there's a whole thing about it and then another one and then another one and i think that's really cool because it's like the amount of effort that's gone into this game from like lore to dialogue to like recorded voice lines as well uh is incredible i think like from what i can see it really seems like one of the big things uh, that really affected people's view of this game is maybe it's visuals. Uh, but I've never been a visuals over everything kind of guy. If a game has a, uh, a good story and it has a good atmosphere, I will be, uh, I'll be like more inclined to be pulled in than if it just looks pretty. Like there's a lot of effort that goes into this stuff. You can't tell me that they didn't put effort into this. I mean, they might have had some issues with these characters pathing <laughs> and walking into each other. Humans walk into each other all the time. They do that awkward little uh, uh, uh. <laughs> So it's it's realistic. My son should be here. Was he on the Hyperion? Yes. He's an agriculturalist. Hmm, that's odd. Prodromos is being set up as a science center. He ought to be in the first wave deployment. You're on the universal wake-up roster. When will he wake up? I'm sure he'll be among the next groups revived out of stasis. Oh, good. That's a relief. You can wait for further instructions over there. Thanks. Do you see that there's... Oop! <laughs> Oop! <laughs> That's a little bit janky. But do you see how there's, like... The the dialogue is also contextual. Like I chose to ch like prioritize science, and now the dialogue here is related to the fact that I you know chose it to be a science outpost. And because he, the son's an agriculturalist, he should get woken up sooner. Like there's like these subtle things in the background happening that my character does. Because if it was like a military thing, there were, I suppose that the dialogue be related to the base being a military thing. But it's cool that like. That's just one corner of um, the Nexus, and it makes it feel very alive. And that our characters' choices and actions um, affect things around it, uh, which is which is really cool. Um, like I said, just that was just one that was just one thing that took place, which is which is super cool. Um, is this the is this the human one? No, hang on. That's is that. A Quarian headpiece, or is that a, a, a Pathfinder headpiece? I'm trying to figure out what kind of helmet that is. Krogan VI, Asari VI, hu oh no, there's Human, Salarian, Turian. This must be Quarian then. The is a place of friendship and cooperation. I just can't see the silhouette that much. Is that a Quarian one? It's not working though. That doesn't look like a Quarian. Settlement that uh, maybe that will update over time. Oh, and then there's ones that aren't even on. I can't talk to them about it. Let's have a look at these. So this is cultural information stuff. It's an Floating data pad. My people are the Turians. It will be a privilege to tell you about them. Okay, this is cool. Okay. Turians are a highly disciplined race who value service to others. No one places personal needs ahead of the greater whole. Public works serve as a focal point of our society. We believe it's our duty to better our species. So this is cool, because maybe if, if Mass Effect Andromeda might be your first Mass Effect game, um, I like that it does go to the effort to s include some background information uh, if you wish to pursue it based on these established uh, species and races, and that's all in the codex as well. Which is really cool. So there's some things that we can kind of skip over because we we ourselves are aware of them. For those that have played uh, Mass Effect before, and we know what they're like. But the effort that goes into also being able to fill in those gaps uh, is is appreciated too. Where do you come from? Turians live on a planet known as Pal. The atmosphere's weak magnetic field shaped our evolution into the life form you see today. Our signature carapace. 
The hard exterior shell we see on Tyrians is actually metal. It protects us from the intense rays of power and sun. What's Turian history like? The history of my people is proof that peace eventually wins out. Disagreements among species turned into lasting friendships. When Turians first met humans, there was a misunderstanding between us that could have had disastrous consequences. And then we made the Normandy together. Humans and Turians eventually joined together in a mutually beneficial partnership. We look forward to doing the same in Andromeda. The pleasure of meeting you has been mine. One that I hope other Turians will soon enjoy. That's another thing. Uh, to pick up my previous note about like spin-off Mass Effect games, what they could make. First Contact War, Krogan Rebellions, like there's so much established history in the Mass Effect world before the events of the first game that you could play in and it would be super cool. It'd be and it, like to see a more primitive version of um, you know, the, the the Milky Way galaxy in the Mass Effect universe. Like even doing humanity's first sort of expansions into into space and encountering this stuff for the first time would be awesome to see, you know? Hi there. Thanks for stopping by. I'm a <laughs> Interested in hearing more about my people? You've programmed this Krogan wrong. It's too friendly. Okay. Of course you are. We may not scare you, but don't let that worry you. It comes from living on a harsh world. We're a species that knows how to thrive, even under the worst conditions. <laughs> Hi there. I'm a Krogan. <laughs> Thanks for chatting. We're all looking forward to meeting our new neighbors. You've been programmed too friendly. Um... If this was set after Mass Effect 3, you know, and they had that established history, we might even see, uh, we might even see a Prothean VI here <laughs> with our, with our pal, and a, and a Geth one. It's, there's ones that are missing. Oh, is, this is the Citadel, right? Yes. This is an image of the Citadel, considered the seat of government for many civilized races in the Milky Way galaxy. Here, the Council deliberates on matters of state. It is a champion of the common citizen, eager to help those in need. As with all political institutions in the Milky Way, conflict is rare. Peace and cooperation are the rule of the day. And then the Reapers showed up. Uh, outpost. Ark. Alright, so we're just getting information on stuff. Cultural Sensor Liaison. Oh! Oh, it's a, it's a VI of... Of Garson, who's dead. <laughs> so this is kind of weirdly tragic. Hello there, neighbor. I'm Jan Garson, the founder of the Andromeda Initiative. I thought you might like to hear more about our plans. Tell me, Elon Musk. Tell me more. Okay. Great. If you're seeing this, it means our pathfinders have done their job and made new friends in the galaxy. Welcome to the Nexus. But I want to put your mind at ease. Seeing our arcs arrive in your neighborhood probably raised some concerns. I'm happy to address them. <laughs> what are you planning to do in this galaxy? Great question. I'd be worried about that too. I can assure you, we have no hostile intentions whatsoever. We're pilgrims who simply want to live in peace. We're eager to learn about new cultures, new ideas, and share our own with you. But we understand trust needs to be earned, no matter what galaxy you're in. And the initiative looks forward to doing just that. Why did you leave the Milky Way? <laughs> I get that question a lot. Many of us have a deep curiosity that needs to know what else is out there. Our own Milky Way is just one tiny speck in a universe full of mysteries. And speaking for myself, the thought of exploring those mysteries in Andromeda was a call to adventure I could not resist. Thank you for taking the time to listen. On behalf of my fellow Milky Way travelers, we couldn't be more excited about what the future holds for all of us. I'm excited at the uh, perspective, uh, the prospect, sorry, the prospect of encountering other species in this galaxy that we can hopefully speak to. Because something that's going to be cool is 
You know, we call it the Milky Way. We call it Andromeda. We named these planets. We named these locations. But what do they call it? What is it to them? Like, you know, what is the Andromeda galaxy called to the native species of Andromeda? Um, that's also always a really interesting point as well. Um, like, we call it the Milky Way. What do you guys call it? That spirally place over there. You are looking at an image of the Milky Way. The original system of the colonists now arriving in Andromeda. Home to countless life forms, the Milky Way is a galaxy where friendship and peace are held in the highest regard. Those arriving in Andromeda bring with them this spirit of enlightenment. They look forward to making your acquaintance. I think we're over here somewhere. We're like over here. Like somewhere towards that like bottom segment. I'm pretty sure we're like around there somewhere in the in the Milky Way. That's cool. Okay, so Gian Garson's in here as a VI. May she live on forever, virtually. <laughs> um, but no, that's that's cool. The cultural area is sweet. So there's stuff to stuff to find around here, which is nice. Tech lab. I can do R and D here. Cool. You can't talk to them from behind. Pathfinder, those bioscans are superb. Could you gather more for our comparative conservation effort? Really? What conservation effort? Ah, my thesis is on the console there. Broad strokes, we're comparing and preserving organisms from both galaxies. If you donate more bioscans and samples to the catalog, I can get you a finder's fee. Tempted? Okay. Access the terminal. Let me talk to you from behind so it works. Hello, Pathfinder. A moment. What can I do for you, Doctor? I have a math problem. Some vital equations that only a mind like Sam's could solve. They concern strange transmission patterns in the Scourge. Perhaps random noise, perhaps not. Sam likes new experiences. It'll be an opportunity to encounter math homework. <laughs> Given the complexity and the security implications, I recommend transferring the equations directly into Sam node. I have them on an optical storage disk for you. I'll see if I have time. Thank you, Pathfinder. Please thank Sam as well. Why does part of me feel like so cautious about that for some reason? Just like, you have to take it directly into the Sam node. I'm like, okay. Is there like a, is there like a, a hack on this, uh, on this USB stick you've given me? That's just me being untrustworthy automatically. <laughs> Being like, hmm, why does it have to be directly into the SAM node? That seems like a compromise of security. Uh, patch notes. I can upgrade my stuff again, right? Customize SAM handshake protocols. Since we are, by definition, an invasive species in Andromeda <coughs> and in the Milky Way, our inevitable footprint must be laid carefully and we must preserve anything we replace. The Helios Cluster presents an unexpected challenge. We arrive with seed archives and DNA banks to ensure preservation of the biodiversity of the Milky Way. This cluster is scarred by the scourge, and its unique flora and fauna are threatened by its turbulence. That too requires con conservation. Okay. Ah, scanning wildlife. Okay. Do you know what? That's another thing that I'm actually quite curious about. Is uh, we have that law that uh, the Quarians were able to use a Mass Effect telescope to look at Andromeda as it currently is, and it makes me wonder if uh, we're still being observed, you know, from the Milky Way galaxy. If uh, they're able to see what's going on right now. Um, it's been 600 years, that's like definitely long enough for newer, faster technology to develop. Uh, I wonder if they could there be other people on their way potentially this is what sequels and dlc i guess could even dive into like we could have like other people with faster ships on their way um to come in you know these power outages my, my, you, you just the, i think it's it's just one of these things with like your thoughts run wild in a setting like this because we're in such a like such an unknown space in terms of um the story and also uh, our own creative or our own thoughts and, and, and feelings kind of go into this game as well, where we're like, fucking... There's literally limitless and boundless possibilities, but at the same time, it is limited because it's in a game, and our <laughs> you can't have... It, it, <laughs> you can't have more than, you know, what's reasonable 
Um, it, it is limited by the fact that it's a, a game, but it's just like the, the premise is still so exciting of exploring um, vast unknown galaxy type shit. But then you're always just like, what's going on back home 600 years ago? Because there's so much stuff going on. What happened while we were all asleep in 600 years? Are we, are we being observed by the Quarians still? Um, with what happened after Mass Effect 3, did they forget about us? You know, all those sorts of questions that can go on forever. What's the trouble? I've got power shortages throughout the station. I can't for the life of me find the cores. Oh, whoa, you, you're the Pathfinder. Hey, sorry, please ignore me. You've got way more important things to do. True. Power to the Nexus is pretty important. I'm happy to help. That, that's great, because I'm at a loss. There are obvious short circuits cropping up all over the place. A Pathfinder's eye might reveal something. There's Scan some terminals. We just scan the area. Yeah. Scan shit. <laughs> Good old scanning stuff. Uh, well, there's a lot of tasks to do. Oh, you're walking into the ground. Uh, where am I? Where am I? I think I'm walking into a dead end right now. There's no paths to be found down here. All of the doors are locked. Let's get out of here. <laughs> this fucking sprint animation is so funny. Ooh. Actually, let's go down these stairs. Thanks for nothing, education. Vortex. Uh, hydroponics. Dr. Camden. Just when I've balanced the air mix, another Yahoo has to come wandering through. Aren't you the Pathfinder? Dr. Camden, head of hydroponic sciences. Mind the seedlings. Are you always this rude to people walking in? Only when a mistake could kill everyone on the Nexus. What do you mean? <sighs> Hydroponics is our air, food and water. A frail green line between us and oblivion. We almost lost it all during the mutiny. Now it's my responsibility. <laughs> if you welcomed people, you'd have more hands to keep everything running. <laughs> Quite astute. If you'll forgive me, perhaps I could begin with you. I need samples of Andromeda's plant life. Our own specimens should acclimatize to them. Bring me any plants you find. You'll have a bounty in return, and my thanks. I was already... Oh, I need to collect plant samples. God damn it. I was like, I was already scanning stuff. Maybe they'll tie into each other. Nope. Nope. They're separate. All right, collect plant samples. Yes! Okay, we got our clubs, baby. No one's dancing? It's time for me to shine. I call this the Pathfinder. There we go. There we go. How's that, everybody? Check these moves out. Path found. Let's go. As soon as I saw Vortex, I'm like, that reads like a club sign. Oh, Liam's here. Of course, he, of course Liam is here. Kicking off some steam, bruv. Get a bit loose, innit? Things are shaping up, Pathfinder. Resources flowing in, sleep is ready to head out. It's starting to feel like the initiative. Not quite up to the sales pitch, but getting there. Feels good, right? Like a new beginning, mate. I feel it, Liam. Finally getting our start. There we go. Getting our shit together. Showing a new galaxy that we have it sorted. If I keep saying it, it's true, right? Dutch Smith. Oh, another one. Damn it. This is supposed to be the chemistry lab. Oh. <laughs> you all keep crawling out of the woodwork like space cockroaches. You say that, Dutch, but here you are, pouring people drinks. Uh, hi. I'm standing right here. They're guinea pigs, damn it. Chemists should have guinea pigs. Not have their labs taken over by people giving them things and... and being nice. 
Was this supposed to be a chemistry lab and then it just got converted into a bar? Bad people. Giving you free things and helping you set up. So inconsiderate. Right? They keep bringing things. Tables and chairs and this bar and lights. Wait, you're making fun of me, aren't you? Don't let Dutch put you off. He's a sweetie, really. I'm not. And the drinks are good. Damn right they are. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm a dirty squirrel. I'm a dirty squirrel, lad. Get that fucking tail in ya. Have a dirty squirrel, son. Okay. Hey, I was wondering if you could help me out. It's for the good of the bar. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Lay it on me. So, folks try and help and all, but we have a limited pool of ingredients. Keep an eye out for anything interesting we could use for new drinks, and we'll let you test them for free. So, Dutch gets ingredients and the guinea pig he wanted, huh? Exactly. Win-win all around. Oh, their animation is in sync and it's really weird to look at. <laughs> their animation was like they were moving it exactly the same way. Let's get some, uh, get some cat bone. Cat bone cocktail. Call it the boner. Perfect. Don't put me in charge of naming drinks. Search for supplies in the Hyperion Atrium. Okay. So, Vortex is pretty neat. So that's where Liam's chilling. So how things go? We got our armor merchant. Now, we're perfect. If you got more, we'll take it off. And our arms merchant. I need to keep some on reserve for engineers. And that's a Venus, that's where we started. Yeah, we need to go to a new level. Oh, hang on. That's over here. I missed someone. I was just chilling right here. Watch your tone. You saw what happened. Your incompetence isn't my problem. Just do your job. What do you want? Sounds like you're having a rough day. You saw that, huh? Oh, I'm sorry I snapped at you. The way Spender treats me? Everyone, I'm just... so angry. I don't understand how he's in any position of authority. I haven't heard much good about that guy. Whatever you've heard, it's not half as bad as the reality. Just last week, he tried to redirect some of the supplies we need to keep the stasis pods going. Why? I have no idea. But if Kesh hadn't stepped in and threatened to airlock him, it would have been a disaster. He's always like that. Making bad decisions, driving the Krogan away, treating people like scum when no one's watching. Maybe there's something I can do? A man like that's bound to have some dirt. I wish Tan and Addison could see it. Things have gotten so bad that Kesh had to literally kick him out of engineering. How literal are we talking here? Boot to ass. Oh, it was glorious. We need him gone, but as incompetent as Spender is at his job, he's insanely good at keeping it. Kesh can tell you more. Okay, talk to Kesh about Spender. Just needed to make sure I got that sorted before we left. That's hydroponics, that's cultural center. The vortex. Now we'll go back to habitation deck. We've got a lot of tasks to resolve and a lot of things to do. And we've been running for uh, quite a little bit of time today. So we're, we're cutting it pretty close to, uh, to time today. So I'm going to bring this episode of Mass Effect Andromeda to a close because we have a long list of things to do on the, on the Nexus. So I was, uh, that's the thing when you, you never know what you're going to run into around the corner. So we always intend to be like, we're going to do this, this episode, and then things prop up and we've gotten a lot of useful and cool information. Um, and I'm really enjoying, uh, taking in a lot of the new stuff so far. So we are going to continue next time on the Hyperion. Um, like I said, long, long list of things to, to run through and more things just keep popping up. Um, we're focusing on like the, the main tasks at the moment. There are some additional ones to check out, um, but we'll be checking them out next time. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Mass Effect Andromeda. Next time we'll check out those memories because I'm really curious to see what they're about. We've got three to have a look at, uh, and then we'll resolve some of these other tasks that we've got. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then.